Hey, what is going on, you Hamburglin Hariyama? We got Fusion Mew, we got DT Mew. Now we have the Excel Gore Mew. This build comes from, as far as I know, Xander Perot. I copied this list specifically from uh, Lee Boy over on Twitter, but their build was only one card off from what uh, Xander played at LAIC. So I'm gonna give credit to Xander on this one, and uh, anyone who wants to correct me can feel free. Excel Gore Mew isn't something extremely new. People tried this out initially when Obsidian Flames dropped and Charizard became a deck as a way for Mew to help deal with Charizard, uh, but it didn't really catch on very much. And then kind of the handlock build of Mew with the Grabbers and Luxray became the way to play Mew to also beat Charizard. Uh, and since then, people have gone back and forth between Fusion and DTE, depending on how popular popular Charizard is, and uh, Charizard's pretty popular right now, so I would currently recommend Excel Gore Mew if you're playing Mew. When I asked Xander about this deck and its matchup against Charizard at LAIC, he told me he thinks it's like slightly favored, like 55-45, but when I played the matchup against Charizard, to be honest, it feels pretty good. I, I mean, the reason to play the Excel Gore is Charizard's weak to grass, and also since Paradox Rift has come out, we also have Roaring Moon in the format, which is also tough for Mew to deal with, but Roaring Moon is also weak to grass. The Roaring Moon matchup feels really good for this deck. The Charizard matchup, from what I've played, also feels really good, because not only do we have the Excel Gore in here to be able to one-hit KO with Charizard EX when they finally set it up, that we can do that with two tablets. Let me read the Excel Gore for you guys real fast so you know what it does. It's got 90 HP, and then when it comes from the bench to the active, it does 120 damage for just a Grass Energy. Normally, the attack costs Grass Double Colorless, and sometimes we do attack with a Grass and a Double Colorless with the DTEs in here to do 100 damage, plus maybe a tablet or two, depending on what we're trying to knock out. Uh, but when we pivot it from, I don't know, a Switch, like we could switch from a Genesect into the Excel Gore. Usually we're pushing a Mew V into our active or there's a Mew V in our active and then we retreat it into the Excel Gore. And then we swing for the 120. Put a couple tablets on there between 180, which is 360, which one hit KO is Charizard EX. So not only do we avoid a one hit KO Charizard EX with a one prize Pokemon as well, um, so that, that way their response isn't going to be, you know, as getting them as close to winning the game. If they knock out our Excel Gore, they're drawing one prize card. If they're not going to Mew V Max, they're drawing three prize cards. Simple math. Um, but we still have Judge and Path in here. You got Judge, you got Path. And because we are going to be knocking out Charizard EXs after they've been established, we can hit them with like follow-up Judges and Paths and Judges and Ionos and stuff like that. So yeah, the, the Charizard matchup has felt pretty good to me so far. Um, I was a little bit uh, unsure what to expect when Xander told me that he thought it was slightly favored. I was like, what? Slightly favored? We got 2-2 Excel Gore in here. We better be, you know, better be winning. <laughs> and it has felt pretty good so far. And the deck overall, it's still Mew. So we're still got the 3-2 Mew VMAX in here. So we got a pretty good Maridon matchup. Um, our Guardi matchup, I'm not going to lie. The Guardi matchup is tough, but I think Guardi's just really good against Mew right now in general. They got Counter Catchers. They got Avery. Yeah, they're just really, really good against Mew in general, in my opinion right now. I feel like Guardi's just kind of walking all over Mew. And it gets even worse when we have a 2-2 Excel Gore, which is like okay against Guardi because it is a one prizer. But Guardi doesn't really care about having to go through an Excel Gore for a prize card for a turn. And we also have three basic Grass Energy in here as well. So we got like a lot of cards that are usually just dead most of the time against Gardevoir and not that good. So the Gardevoir matchup really is suffering with this build, I feel like. I feel like I'd much rather be playing a Fusion or a more straightforward DTE handlock build if I was really trying to take down Gardevoir. This build, yeah, I mean, it's just not not quite as good against the Gardevoir deck. But we do get to beat Charizard more consistently. I definitely think this, this build of Mew beats Charizard the most consistently, especially that B-Barrel build, because the B-Barrel build, Team Evolution out of B-Barrel, the handlock build starts to struggle against that. So, but more people are going back to the Charizard Pidgey build. So maybe DT, DT Mew handlock can work once again, having a pretty good overall Charizard matchup. But let's talk about the rest of the deck. So I talked about the Excel Gore, one prize attacker, 120 damage. You get some power tablets involved. Like I mentioned, you can knock out stuff like Squawkabilly or Luminion. Um, for the supporters, we got two Judge and an Iono for the draw supporters in here. So we can still be pretty disruptive through the Judge. Plus we got the Paths in here. We got two bosses orders. I uh, need some Gust of Fucks in here. And there's a Pal Pad to reuse our supporters uh, whenever we want. We got a one of Silene in here. The Silene I actually was really unsure of. I hate Silene in Mew. I've never liked it. Although, even if I don't like it, it doesn't mean I don't understand when it's good. And I do think it is good in this build of Mew, especially because the power tablets are so important in the Charizard matchup. And sometimes you just got to play some power tablets early. Sometimes you got to cram one. Sometimes you got to ultra ball one. Sometimes you just play one so you can draw more cards with Genesect. Like, we got to make sure we're playing the game. You know, we can't just always conserve them. So the Silene being able to recover power tablets or the Pal Pad to be able to recover the Silene to recover the power tablets can be a really strong play to make sure we're getting those one-hit KOs on the Charizards. Uh, for the item lineup, of course, four Battle of Epi Vest, four Chromatic, four Ultra Ball, one Heavy Ball. For the other Pokemon search cards, one Level Ball, because it finds Shelmet and Excelgore. Level Ball is actually pretty cool. One Feather Ball finds the Mew V and the Mew V Maxes. 
one nest ball kind of finds any of our basic pokemon obviously the feather ball is the one that i think maybe should come out for just like another nest ball to help us in the early game just to make sure we can find our genesex but feather ball does find mu v and it's not so much about just finding genesex as it is just about finding basic pokemon so we draw more cards with our genesex so it's not really just about genesex it's just kind of about getting basics in play on that first turn as long as it's the fusion pokemon we should be kind of good to go Two switch one escape rope that's the only change that lee made i believe from the list from laic was minus one four seal stone plus one switch from xander's build and the switches did feel really really good so i definitely like that change that lee made the second switch was actually really sick um but definitely would also play with the one escape rope as well so that was a pretty good lineup a super rod i don't know what you're thinking what why the heck is there a super rod in here and that's why we play basic grass energy you could include maybe one fusion energy to help you out a little bit more against snorlax control um it can have some other fun uses as well but the basic grasses make a little bit more sense because they do combo with the super rod to be able to recover an excel gore line so that we can kind of chain the one prizers up against specifically like the charizard match if you kind of want to chain excel gores uh is the game plan so you set up like some genesex and a mu v uh, so three genesec mu v and then two shelmet and that's why the heavy ball is really important in this build because you need the second shelmet in the matchups that you need it um Heavy ball would be a little bit less necessary if we didn't have the Excel Gore line in here. But we have the Excel Gore line here, so we kind of need the heavy ball. So you get the Shelmets down, one Mew, three Genesex, and you kind of just chain Excel Gores with the Super Rod, and then Silene recovers Super Rod, and then Super Rod recovers the, uh, the Excel Gore line, uh, and you repeat that until you hopefully win the game. So Super Rod's in here to recover those, and that's why we play the Grass Energy, Basic Grass Energy over the Fusion Energy, because we also want to recover the Basic Energy. But like I said, you could maybe do one Fusion. Um, it helps in the control match to be able to retreat stuff, stuff like that, so... Maybe throw one of those in there. Choice Belt, still need that. I mean, it's really good against uh, the uh, Maraidon matchup, KO Raikus and Raichu and stuff like that. You want to be able to KO Lost Tinas um, or Giratinas in Lost Tina, I should say. And then Mirror Match, you never know when it's going to come up in Mirror Match as well. So one Choice Belt still seems like it's worth it in here. I feel like we're getting closer and closer to the point where you don't play Choice Belt in Mew anymore, but I don't think... I don't think we're quite there. We're really close, though, to be honest. We are really close to no longer playing Choice Belt in Mew VMAX. It's not as good as it once was. That is for sure getting closer getting closer oh four lost vacuum in here as well bumps our own path bumps other people's stadiums gets cards out of our hands that are kind of stuck in our hands so we can draw more cards with genesect i mean lost vacuum is just really really good to mew um for a lot of reason let's just kind of chain our path as well we can put path in play lock out our opponent then we vacuum it then we draw then we put another path in play and then repeat three paths to the peak in here as well can be pretty disruptive in the charizard matchup really good against gardvor basically our only win condition against gardvor like i said i'm not a big fan of this list's gardvor matchup as far as that goes but the path is path is our key judge path judge path iono path pray um and then also gives us some play in the mirror match as well our mirror match is also kind of rough uh, as well i'm not gonna lie because we do just kind of have cards that aren't that good in the mirror match selgor's not great grass energy aren't aren't great but our mirror match is still pretty close because the core of the mirror match especially dte versus dt is go first and turn two knock out a two prize pokemon and then knock out two more two prize pokemon they play two boston and palpat we play two boston and palpat so all the core cards for the mirror match are still in here for the dte matchup um and as a dt mew against fusion mew, i guess we have all the same cards that a normal uh fusion mew or normal dt mew has against fusion so our matchup our core of the matchup is the same but we do have some more clunky cards in here that can make things a little bit more difficult for us than our opponent because yeah i mean excel gore <laughs> if mew was weak to grass if mew was weak to grass but unlike them we're actually beating charizard so that is the plus right there overall and that's it that's the excel gore mew build let me know what you guys think about excel gore mew is it better than the fusion better than dd what do you think have you played with this build yet are you gonna try it out let me know in the comment section down below and of course we get into the action i gotta let you know where i got this dope squirtle squad shirt over at qualitypatchdesigns.com go check them out they got a ton of pokemon merch over there well, like i said qualitypatchdesigns.com there will of course be a link in the description and you can use code azul gg over there for a discount as well and of course the coolest thing that they do over at quality patch is they can take your favorite pokemon card artwork and put it on a t-shirt if you're the first person to put that artwork on a t-shirt you get a little first edition on that t-shirt as well so check them out qualitypatchdesigns.com code azul gg a couple technical issues in this intro don't mind them i was on a good flow here so i didn't want to have to i didn't want to reshoot this one let's go ahead let's jump into some action with Excel Gore Mew, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Uh, I honestly think I should just get. Uh, nah, I'm playing the game. I'm doing like this. See if we can beat this Charizard thing. Oops. Give me some money. Hey! Give me some. Let me check my prize cards. 3 2, prize of Genesect. 
Selgor. Gen 6 Excelgore, Iono. Iono. Selgor, Genesect. Tablets. Escape rope? Nope. Tablet grass. Something else. <clears throat> Hopefully we just find our heavy ball and that solves it for us though. Oh, it auto does it? Dude, I was expecting it. Wait, has it always auto done it? Actually, I don't even know if it has or not. Yeah, I should go for the triple genesect off the rippity. Rippity no dippity. I want to see more cards guaranteed. And if the third genesect sees the XL gore, then we're... Or Schmelmit, whatever you want to call it. Um, interesting. I go like this. Fail. Throw this down. I think I just hold. Oh, do I hold? No, I think I should have played this. <clears throat> I should have played this and gotten rid of that and got a grass energy and put on a Schmelmit. That's what should have happened there. Yeah. Grass for Schmelmet. I could play the level ball for the Excel Gore now, but I shouldn't because if they Iono me, I want to be able to draw into the Excel Gore. So we just chill. Okay, I dig it. I dig it. We don't path this turn. We path next turn. Maybe we'll see what happens. All right, that's a pretty good start. I like it. <clears throat> I should have played the. I should have played the cram on the vacuum. I, I was thinking about keeping the vacuum because I was like, I do want to path next turn to make it harder for them to set up and play the game. But then I was like, do I want to path. What was it? What was going through my head? I was like. But I want the answer for my own path. But I was like, I don't need the answer for my own path there. Um, yeah, I don't need the answer for my own path that that turn. So I, could, I was fine to chill. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, do you chase Pidgey, Rotom, or Bidoof? Depending on what they have. Uh, I think KO Active Judge Path is probably what we're going for. I mean, we'll see what they set up here. But this is going to be four Seal Stone to Rody. Well, now I want a vacuum to get rid of their four Seal Stone, to be honest. Um... <clears throat> Kaoin Mew is pretty good here, though. Kaoin Pidgey doesn't make any sense in this matchup at all. Well, that's not true. Kaoin Mew is just as good as Kaoin Pidgey early on, though. Because the Mew finds Ultra Balls and Rare Candies and stuff. Whereas, like, the Pidgey's not a Pidgeot. Like, the Mew is almost a Pidgeot as a basic. But the, the Pidgey has to become Pidgeot before I actually care about it, so... That makes sense. Yeah, honestly, I think we just go KO the active here. Um... So they can uh, charge it and swing onto Excelgors. That would be annoying, yeah. But I almost have to like, yeah. Honestly, that would be really annoying. Oh yeah, that'd be really annoying. <laughs> That's all I got though. I need to find Judge. So I can Judge Path Knockout. Yikes! Y yikes! Do I go Boss KO? No, dude. Their hand is so big. I need a judge, man. I need a judge, right? I feel like I need a judge here. But do I want to play a tablet to find a judge? I only get to draw one. But the hand's so locked up anyways, I feel like I need to progress the hand anyways. Yeah, so at this point, I think it's correct to play it. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Dude, I just... I can't miss with Mew, bro. I don't miss, baby! Okay. Well, they play Vacuum, so I guess I shouldn't put that in play, to be honest. They also play Iono. Shoot. They only play, like, they play, like, two Vacuum. Mm, if they're gonna Iono me, I'd probably find it out anyways. We're chill. I think we're pretty chill. You know, if I had to say, you know, scale of 1 to 10, we're probably close to, like, a 10 on the chill meter. Oof, second Excel is a pretty good pull there, actually. <clears throat> I dig it. Oh, Super Rod might have been the last prize card, to be honest. <clears throat> A wizard yeah i do what i i do what i can all right let's see how good yeah you definitely want to get like the full combo against them they didn't attach the stone they didn't that was actually a, a misplay i might have actually even gone stone for vacuum to vacuum their stone if they had to be honest hey yo the heat tackle yeah, they're getting in there that's a bad play though because they can't they should have like sent this thing up and called for family uh Wait. Genesect. Oh, it was an Ultra Ball. That was the last prize card. Okay. I was like so confused there for a second. I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me. 
All right. Hard retreat versus switch. I'm leaning towards the switch to keep the grass attached. Slap? Did we just win the prize trade on board now, though? I think we do. Yeah, that was a really bad attach, actually. Actually, they could have just attached to Charmander, so that way they could go Candy Zard attach, right? Yeah. That was a really bad... That attach, like, made no sense. Because they don't even have, like, a follow-up to that. Like, they hit this for 60. If they had, like, two Heat Tackle Charmanders, maybe that's worth it. Maybe. But even then, I, doubt, I doubt that's worth it, to be honest. That was kind of just a throw. <clears throat> Okay, that does some that does some stuff for them. They get some stuff off that for sure. Um, I'm feeling pretty good here, to be honest. I'm feeling pretty good. This list is actually, to be honest, there's not too much I ch like. I like everything. I like most of the things in this list. I don't like Silene just in general as a card in Mew, but I think it is correct in here. Um, as far as talking about deck building, that's like a perfect ex uh, segue for me to talk about deck building. Like, I don't like I like just because I don't like a card doesn't mean I won't play a card. Like. We all have some like emotional to attachment to cards on why we on stuff we like and want to play and don't want to play. But if you want to maximize the deck's win percentage, you just let the results dictate what you play, not what how you feel about a card. Like personally, like just because you don't like flipping coins, doesn't mean Lugi is a bad deck. It just means you don't like flipping coins. But if you're trying to play the best deck in the format and you and you can analyze that it's Lugia, then you probably should play Lugia if you're trying to maximize your win percentage at a tournament. Now, if you're trying to play a good deck at a tournament and not flip coins, then that's like a fine reason to not play Lugia. But you're like knowingly not maximize your win percentage, which you have to be aware of, which you want to be aware of. Why is grass better than fusion? Um, D's. No, uh, yeah, D's. No, um, uh, super odd. <clears throat> Was the fusion energy in the original list for Psychic Leap? You're usually Psychic Leaping through Mew e VMAX. It, the fusion energy is good against Spiritomb and Control. I assume that's why it was played, to be honest. I don't actually know. I, could, I couldn't actually tell you why, but that's my assumption. I think we just went on board, right? Double fusion, then we just Gust KO that. I'm just too chill with it. Give you like a, it's a give you a play against Tomb. It's not a good play against Tomb, but it's like something. I have second boss in the deck. But I could just boss KO Rotom this turn. Oh shoot, I shouldn't have played it like this and I was gonna go for that. I wanna smell it on my, I wanna KO the Zar, hmm. What am I doing? Two tablets. How do I play this? How do I play this? Always KO Zard first. Yeah, KOing Zard first seems way better here. Okay, that's fine. We have a boss left to chase, chase the roadie, so we should be fine. Getting another Mew V on my bench would actually be pretty good, though. I wouldn't mind that. We need to we'll find a way to bump the stadium, though. Hey, yo! Alright. We don't have the, uh... <clears throat> We hit zero tablets so far. There's one. Play this, grab this, check this. We got Super Rod. Okay, we do have Super Rod. I kind of like putting Path and Play at the end of this turn, right? To make them work harder. So I could go Ultra Ball. Fail. Tablet. Eileen, recover. I don't really want to recover tablet to be honest, but I don't want to use my four seal stone either. So I can grab tablet plus boss, right? Tablet or pal pad, because pal pad can recover boss Eileen. But I just want the boss. I want to shuffle the deck though. I don't know. We're gonna go like that, and then I'll draw and I'll figure it out. <clears throat> I always like psych myself out about that to be honest. Our tablet. I'll add at least the boss. But if they, if they kill this thing with Charizard anyways. Okay, let's go down to four. I would just want to maybe just the Silene to have more stuff. Like just, I don't know. I don't know if it really matters to be honest. Good. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've only played two games against Charizard, and the first one my opponent was playing a very interesting list, but this feels like a pretty good matchup. I don't know. Which I would hope. Like, when you look at this list, you're like, okay. All right. It's a Mew deck that beats Charizard. But the question is, at what cost? What are we beating Charizard with a 2-2 Excelgore line? Like, our Guardian matchup has to be terrible, right? 
Like our guardian matchup has to be terrible, right? Like our guardian matchup was already felt not great. And now we got all this junk in here. Like, I don't think I'm cooking guardy anymore, you know? <clears throat> yeah, the question is at what cost? At what cost? It's gotta be the, like, the guardian matchup is definitely worse. But we could, could put a box of disaster in here to make it a little bit better. I wouldn't mind trying to fit that in here because guardy is like a real thing. But if I was playing guardy, I would love to play against six Mew Excel Gores, I feel like. Or nine Mew Excel Gores, excuse me, at a regional. I'd be like, yeah, just keep them coming. Just keep them coming. Another one. Another one. Is one prize to hit after they KO Mew? Yeah, but that's fine. Because the then you can just go guardy. So what happens is you're going to go... Yeah, it's just fine. You just go Guardi EX KO Excel Gore. And then it's like, now they have to commit to a Mew KO and then you just go, okay, nuke for the win. Or like, you can just go Guardi EX, counter catch a KO with Genesect for turn. Like, it's just so free. It's so free. <clears throat> There's like, no, they just don't have a good play. Like, it all it does is give better plays to the Guardi player. The Guardi player just has way more options to work with. I think having one retreat cost is really nice, actually. If this thing had two retreat costs, that would kind of suck. <laughs> I mean, good matchup, I think, but... Could be the Lost Zone deck as well. Let me just open that. The Spit Beam. I mean, if they're dead drawn and we top deck Judge, we have a shot. It's basically the combination we need, though. They need a dead draw and we need a top deck Judge. Like a weakness card reprint would be cool. Um... It never felt oppressively like it never weakness card. I guess man, I would be cool. I wouldn't hate a weakness card. Weakness card energy never felt like weakness card and energy never felt like. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about not getting attacked to turn one if this is how their opening's going. It never felt like you were completely locked a deck out of like being able to deal with you, like. You play the weakness card energy. Like, you have a bad matchup because of weakness, so you play some weakness card energy to help. And it gives you a chance, but it's still a bad matchup, usually. It's still not great. Um, yeah. Hello? Yo, is that the truth? Pidge? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. A lot of cards that cut into your turboness. We're honest, any way of playing around having to find boss off the top to finish games? It's, uh, it's such a big part of the... It is a, It is like a really a big part of the, the deck closing out games, to be honest. Okay, we're putting it together here. Hold on, let me cook. Oh, wait, we can level... Dude, this is actually too sick. Um... We can <laughs> get Silene for level. <laughs> no, I don't want two heads. These cards suck besides the level ball. All right, I'll we'll take a tablet. It's like the first time I've ever not wanted double heads on Silene. Cringe. What a waste of a Silene heads, bro. What a waste. I had all the rest of my. Oh my gosh. I maybe should have taken the vacuum instead, to be honest. The rest of the cards in my, my discard just sucked. <laughs> the vacuum might have been the better grab there, to be honest. Dude, it still sucks. All right. All right. We are just kind of a top deck Genesect. If they don't kill my Excel Gore, we just probably win, to be honest. But I need like a like I need an Ultra Ball here or something. Or just a Genesect, to be honest, would be a good start. Guess I'm not too surprised that I'm beating freaking... Pidgey Moon, though. Oh my gosh. The top decks are actually going crazy. I almost put it on my Mew as well. I was like, all right, put this on the Mew. Excelgore's carrying, but... Eh, I'm just kind of like Iono knockout away from just like losing this game. <laughs> like... Okay. That's good. Well, it depends if I keep this hand or not, to be honest. Dude, because this is probably Maridon, right? And I'm going to get... I can go like the 2-2-2 strat, I guess. 
I don't hate the idea of that, to like play around. Escape rope KO, force them into the hands if they want to. Honestly, Excelgore's not like a terrible attacker because he can like KO squawk abilities and stuff. I, I don't like the idea of not putting two Mew V in play just in case things get weird. I think I'm comfortable with the draw power of just two Genesect. Um in this matchup as well, especially because like we are going first, we have a decent start, like everything's kind of moving and cooking and stuff like that. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable about it like this, to be honest. Okay, I'll, we'll, we'll rock, we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> I don't know if I love it, but I hate it. <laughs> wow, that's like pretty weak draw power. I save this for an Excel Gore. I can find an Exogor next turn if I want. But that means I should have played to begin with, so that was a mistake to not play it immediately. I don't know if it was going to affect what I would see this turn. Looks like it would have affected what I would have seen. That's fine, though. <sighs> Damn, dude. The Mirada matchup is just good, though. Like, they just, they just struggle to, to, to... Like, like I don't know. Like, theoretically, like, when I think about it, it doesn't seem like it should be as hard as it is. But it is pretty tough. It's definitely a tough one. There's, like, no way to... Rem well, the way to remedy the matchup is to play Spirit Tomb or... Take it back. There is a way to remedy the matchup. You have to play Spirit Tomb or Drapion. And then that's how you turn the matchup from a yikes to a potential dub. But it's not a definite dub. Definitely not a definite dub. But you need one of those. You need one of those goons. You need the Spirit Tomb or you need the Drapion or two Drapion. That's pretty good too. That would definitely do the work. Okay, so they're playing Battle VIP Pass. Why do I think they weren't the aggro build? Oh, because they played Arvin. I, I don't, I, Arvin's not terrible, I guess. In fact, should the deck play not just for Peony, but also an Arvin or two? Because Arvin's, like, not as good as Peony. It's not as good as Peony, but it's still pretty good, right? And, like, sometimes you whiff Peony, so you'd settle for an Arvin if you had an Arvin, right? That seems to be what my opponent's doing. They got, well, now maybe they're just doing Arvin's no Peony. Now, I don't like that. <sighs> I don't like that. When Arvin is fine if you play Sealstone? Yeah. Also, it finds Bravery Charm, too. Like, it'll have decent targets still. But it's kind of like... It's like, it, I would play 5 Peony if I could, but I can't. So instead, I'm going to play an Arvin and 4 Peony. But then at that point, should you play a Pokey Gear instead? I guess you could maybe play a Pokey Gear instead. But you do sometimes end up in situations where you don't have very many, very many Peony in your deck. And, like, the chance that you hit it with a Pokey Gear is pretty low as well, to be honest. So honestly, yeah, maybe an, an Arvin on top of the 4 Peony could be good. I have plenty of games with that deck where I just kind of draw into what I need on the first turn, but I wouldn't have minded hitting a Peony or an Arvin in that case. Jeez, bro, they kind of cooked. They got their two prize cards. All right. <clears throat> okay, I see you. I see you. This thing is kind of hard to KO. He's kind of beefy. 230. I need double tablet. It's kind of annoying. All right. I should probably hold out for a Genesect here. I have to imagine that Super Rod's not that good right now. I don't really want to Super Rod to... Just get rid of their Beach Court, right? Because the Force Seal Stone is used. I also don't want them to put a Bravery Charm there if that becomes the best place to put a Bravery Charm. Play another Vacuum doesn't really do a whole ton. I think we should judge and hope to hit a Genesect and then knock out their active. Go from there. Not great. Oh, I didn't play the tablet. Dude, I literally just trolled. I have to play the tablet. Why did I not play the tablet there? That's insane. That is a throw. I literally had the tablet. I literally had the tablet in my hand and I just didn't, I did not play it. Beautiful, love it, let's go. I'm gonna go path bump it with the vacuum. All right, head, so I think we just get Genesect here and just draw six more cards or potentially six more cards up to six more cards <clears throat> oh my gosh holy smokes what a draw that is actually insane dude that was actually sick double DTE I mean you guys see it alright Need another tablet though, which I could have already played, but chose not to for some reason. That's like prize. <clears throat> but I think I'd rather do this and keep the other Kramer around. Tablet. 
All right, I do have to use this to get the tablet. That does kind of suck. But maybe the tablet I drew was the one I shuffled back into the deck. But then I wouldn't have drawn that. I would have drawn something else. That increased my odds of seeing a tablet this turn. Yeah. All right, it's definitely a mistake. I'm not going to excuse it. <clears throat> definitely a mistake. No excuses. No excuses. I don't know. I like remembered. I was like thinking about playing. I was like, okay, we play the tablet before we play the judge. And then I started playing out the rest of my turn. And then I just like forgot to play it. Like, I don't even like, there's no excuse. Like we just like, I just started playing other cards. And I was like, these cards are cool too. Definitely not correct though. Right. <clears throat> okay. So they got a couple, they got a couple routes here. They want to set up Flaffy. They can go boss Genesect, boss Genesect. That's tough though. This build usually plays like two boss. Um, they had double sheep though. That's a lot of energy acceleration. Um, oof, in the beach card. Okay, chill out, chill out. Yeah, so they could try and go boss, boss. There's not much I can do about that, though, to be honest. If they have boss, boss, I probably um, <clears throat> if they have boss, boss, I probably just lose. Like, I can't. I don't think I can beat boss, boss. I'm not gonna Iono them. If they get a boss this turn, we're definitely gonna Iono them. But um, yeah, not too much I can do about boss, boss, to be honest. But. Yeah, not too much I can do about it. I just, I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> KO the active and then I don't know and hope they whiff. But they're pretty set up to be able to do the boss boss play if they can find them. They're like, they're they're like a, a mix bag builds here. Though. They got the Arvins, they got the Bavia IP pass. They got double Billy, but they also have 2-2 two, two Flaffy as well. Oh, there's the boss. All right. <clears throat> Oh, I'm gonna Iono and pray they don't hit the other boss. And I hopefully hit find a path as well. I wanna path him as well. Um I think my last chance is prize, and I got rid of my heavy ball, so let's just throw this down. Iono path prey, here we go. I think they drew with Raikou. I think they did. Maybe I missed that as well though. Play this. Play this. Path. This grabs nothing right now. What do I need to win the game? Boss wins the game. I have boss in hand. Um, I win with just boss. Um, I do want to draw again though. Let's get rid of these two then, right? There's nothing to pout that back, so. Draw three path knockout prey. <clears throat> path. They could play Iono. If they do Iono me, I'm not gonna want these. I don't want to draw into Excel Gore. I think we play that as well. I don't want those in the deck if I'm trying to redraw into the boss. And then if they do Iono me, I don't want to see Excel Gore. Okay, so they need they got two card hand, top deck for turn. They need boss energy or generator uh oh well they have nothing let's go it's a dub well no no no, no it is a dub yeah we just win because ultra ball never leads to anything here that scared me for a second i don't know but would they ultra ball away there that was weird was it energy Mew? Bro, this build is so weird to me. Cause they, ha they're like. Dude, that build, this build is just so weird to me. They got stuff like Battle VIP Pass in here, but then they have stuff like two Mew EX. But then they also have two, two Flaffy. It's like, it is, it's, I think it's just too much stuff in this build. It's like, has the like, more aggressive stuff, but they have like all this other junk in here as well. But then they have all the other slower stuff, which is fine to have the slower stuff, but then I think you should commit to being a, 